All right, we welcome Chair to the, the show Senator Rick Scott from Florida. Senator Scott, thanks very much, sir. Good to see you. Always great to be with you, Larry. So let me begin. Uh, you're a newsmaker right now. You and some other Senate Republicans uh, are pushing an amendment called No Hearing, No Vote with respect to reconciliation. And of course, the great part about reconciliation is regular order under the Democrats has been completely smashed, and nobody really knows what's going to be in this stuff. But tell us, if you would, no hearing, no vote. Well, I mean, Chuck Schumer doesn't want to live under the standards that he's proposed in the past. So when the, when the tax uh, reduction was done by the Republicans back in 2017, Chuck Schumer says, oh, we can't do this. You can't do this without a hearing. So because, you know, he, he wanted to slow it down. In our case, what we, wanted, he, what we want them to do is have a hearing to tell people what the living daylights is in this bill. So what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Chuck Schumer proposals have a hearing so people know what's in it. We completely agree. Chuck, let's have a hearing so we know what's in this monstrosity that's trillions of dollars that's not even paid for. So, I mean, hey, I mean Chuck is just completely disingenuous. You know, I would think some Democratic senators might agree with you because yesterday, when people or the day before, I don't know, Biden, President Biden had a meeting with a bunch of senators, and then Schumer and Pelosi had a press conference, as you know, and they started announcing, well, we've got $3.5 trillion, and we've got this, and we've got that. And other people, like Manchin, Senator Manchin said, well, I don't know anything about it. I wasn't there. Um, Senator Warner of Virginia doesn't know anything about it. So I, I was just wondering, you might pick up Democratic support. They don't know what's going on either. Yeah, it's, it's like, remember Pelosi? Uh, on the Obamacare said, we got to pass it to know what's in it, right? So that's not what this should be done. We should tell the American public. Now, they're talking about the biggest tax increase in the history of this country. They're going to change social programs for, de for, you know, for decades. They don't want to pay for it. They're, first off, they're lying about what's going to cost. They're saying, oh, the programs aren't going to be around for a short period of time. We know once a federal program starts, it's almost impossible to stop it. So this is at least a five and a half trillion dollar bill. The Democrats don't even know how it's going to get paid for. For sure, we don't. The Republicans don't know how it's going to get paid for. And it's going to completely change this country. It's not what we should be doing. Let's be transparent. Let's be honest with the American public. If your taxes are going up, let's be telling you, hey, the Democrats are voting for your taxes going up. And everybody's taxes are going to go up with this. So earlier today, sir, in a presser where President Biden actually took questions, he claims that all the spending, all the cradle to grave spending that you're describing will be paid for. Okay, now I agree with you. You're really talking about a five to five and a half trillion dollar package. They're saying three and a half trillion. But here's uh, where I'm going with this, Senator Scott. The tax, the Joint Tax Committee, which is the scorekeeper here, the official scorekeeper, they say the ways and means mark on tax hikes from Richard Neal and so forth. Really, will only generate two trillion. So two trillion is less than three and a half trillion, and it's a whole lot less than five and a half trillion. So how can President Biden say everything's going to be completely paid for? I don't get that. It's a lie. Remember, Larry. Remember, on their infrastructure bill, that was going to be paid for too, and the CBO finally came out and says, you know, that's not being paid for either. That was a quarter of a trillion dollar deficit. Uh, and uh, deficit spending. So this is trillions of dollars that are, are not being paid for. They're just being completely dishonest. And let's remember why we're fighting over this, all right? Why we're fighting over this is this hurts the average American person. Look at the inflation we're seeing right now. This spending causes inflation to go up. Inflation is already at the highest it's been, what, 40 years because of reckless spending, and they want to do more of this to hurt the poorest families. We're already seeing that, if, that income increases are not staying up with inflation. So we're already seeing these things hurting the poorest families and the people on fixed income. The Democrats have got to stop this, stop hurting the people they say they care about, which they don't. Well, that brings us to another subject. Also this morning, President Biden said that his program, this whole reconciliation bill, is very, very popular. Everyone loves this bill. But to your point on inflation, um, we have a new Fox News poll out that shows the number one issue in the country is not spending and it's not tax hikes, it's inflation. Like 81% of people voted for inflation. I've also seen um, Investors Business Daily tips poll, very, very good pollster. People associate big spending with higher inflation. 
and regard that, again, as the number one issue. So how can the president say he has overwhelming support? This is the same administration that says that we're not, you know, we're not going to see inflation. Basically, basically this spending is going to reduce inflation. They said the border's secure. They said all, every, all Americans got out of Afghanistan. I mean, there's, there's so many lies out of this administration. It's disgusting. I mean, they think the American public is a bunch of idiots. There we're not. We know when you, when you waste money, our taxes are going up. All of our taxes are going up. It's going to cause inflation. It's going to hurt our families, our, the poorest families and people on fixed income the most. It's unfair to them the most. So another one, also this morning, I mean, this is not me, Kudlow. This is what President Biden said. Again, the rich don't pay their fair share. Now, we know from the IRS data, the top 1% pay 40% of all the income taxes. The bottom two quintiles, the bottom 40% have a negative income tax. They don't pay anything. They get more benefits than they pay in taxes. But here's the thing, Senator Scott. The Joint Tax Committee also estimated that middle-income people, middle-income people will pay 67 percent, two-thirds uh, of the tax increase from corporations and small businesses and so forth. Now, that flies in the face of this whole class warfare, tax the rich, you know, woke ideology. But how can you deny that? It's not me. It's the Joint Tax Committee. They're the official scorekeepers. They're not supply-siders, as you well know. So doesn't Biden have to be held accountable to that? Absolutely. So they're going to raise taxes on everybody. But on top of it, inflation impacts all of us. It's a tax, but it's a bigger tax on the poorest the most. So inflation is a tax, and this bill is a big tax increase. And by the way, if you increase the taxes on a company, who pays that? The consumer pays that. Who do you think is going to pay for it? I mean, so it's, it always gets passed on. So what they're, they're just completely lying about what's going to happen. Your infl inflation is going to continue to go up. It's horrible now. I mean, gas prices is up 40 percent, food prices is up, car prices is up. Look at home prices. If, if you're getting started, how do you ever buy a home in this country now? Because of Biden and the Democrats' reckless spending. It's causing people not to be able to afford to live in this country. So uh, last, last thing here. Uh, Nancy Pelosi says or said they're going to vote on the infrastructure bill in the House uh, on Monday. September 27th was her original promise. Now, sir, she's saying that actually they can't vote until they get the reconciliation package through. So that breaks her promise, and it also breaks President Biden's promise that there'd be two separate bills and two separate votes. Um, let me ask you on the timing on the Senate side. What do you think about the reconciliation bill? How long will it take? Will there be hearings? You know, you're calling for hearings. I think you're dead right. The public has a right to know. Um, with this, you know, we're going to have a continuing resolution. We're going to have a debt ceiling. How do you see this playing out? I, I mean, I think, that, I think the Democrats have put us in a position. They are, it looks like they're going to make the decision that we will not raise the debt ceiling. And the Democrats, it's a decision they're making not to raise the debt ceiling next week. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. And then on top of that, we have a continuing resolution they know is not going to happen. They could do this on their own, but they're putting things in. It's not, they'll make sure it'll never happen. I don't get why they're doing these things. And this reconciliation, I'm, ho I'm hopeful. I hope the Democrats realize the public doesn't want this. Don't vote for it. It's bad for America. And it's bad for the Democrats' re-election. It's going to help Republicans, but that's not good for the country. I mean, I'd love to win elections, but I want to make sure we do good things for this country. Help the people who need help. To help the poorest families. Help the people on fixed income. Don't hurt them. So I know you're the head of the Republican Senate Campaign Committee. And I think you're going to have a pretty good year, too. But I do want to ask you, I can't resist, can't help myself. Senator Joe Manchin says we should have a strategic pause well into next year. I think he's talking about April of 2022. Um, sounds quite reasonable to me, sir. You know, if it goes that far without a reconciliation bill, I'd say the bill's going to get killed. What's your final thought on Joe Manchin? Well, I agree with Joe. I mean, I, I agree with Joe that we ought to put a pause on this. We don't need all this spending. We've got to figure out how to get this economy going again. 
We've got to live within our means. Let's focus on that. Don't focus on wasting dollars and causing more and more and more inflation on the poorest families of this country. All right, Senator Rick Scott, we appreciate your time very much, sir. I know you got a busy day. All I can say is save America and kill the bill. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, bye, Larry. <laughs>